By the way, we're not sponsored by uh, bad mat mattresses or whiteboards. So yet. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So the next thing is optimizing mental activity. As much as we would like to say nutrition is the most important thing, or exercises, because our research is exercise, nutrition, and all these other factors, mental activity is by far the most important. Because of those connections, the cognitive reserve we talked about. Now each neuron, 87 billion neurons, each neuron can make a couple of connections, or 30,000 connections. The analogy I give is, <clears throat> it's obviously a false analogy, but it's a pic you can, it helps you picture it. Here's a piece of memory and you're trying to get to it. There are two connections, axons, connected to that piece of memory. At 20, you did something, you know, a bad night's sleep or, or a good night or whatever, that, that, uh, uh, that one is severed. At 30, you had a, your head bumped into something and this one was severed. It's more, more complex than that. What happened to that memory? Gone forever. Now, imagine 30,000 connections to that. What's going to get rid of that memory? Nothing. I mean, short of a huge stroke, nothing. That's where the resilience comes in. And there are many studies that have actually shown this. So the, this is the part that I want everybody to focus on. <clears throat> there are many, many studies, and I think our study is in here as well. The London taxi driver study, who knows about this study? There we go. So it's a very interesting study. By the way, this is pre-GPS. Um, <clears throat> this is when I was driving uh, probably for Domino's and, and trying to make money for my college. And uh, it's, it was difficult back then. Anybody who knew they had these books that you said J7 and you would find the place. You can't imagine how many people got free pizzas because of my driving and, and directions in and, and DC, in Virginia, Fairfax. Uh, but, but nonetheless, it was very complex. Now take that, go to London. And if anybody's been in London, it's horrendous. The, the, it's not like Chicago, Rush Street, you know, there's a, it's much more chaotic. And, <clears throat> and more importantly, um, it, what it is is at that time, they had to memorize the taxi drivers for the test. Every street, every number. I mean, that's incredibly complex. And the test was pretty complicated. They had to take it. So they said, let's do this test. We do neuropsych testing beforehand, imaging, and volumetrics beforehand and after the study period, <clears throat> those who passed. And they looked at the brains of those who passed before and after. These are not 20 year olds. These are people in their 50s and, and, and around that age average. And guess what they saw? That their brains actually grew. So we thought that your brain is supposed to shrink after the 20s, right? They're, especially their hippocampus, the part of the memory associated with memory, actually grew. Now, let me tell you a growth. To see the growth on MRI volumetrics, it's significant. Their brains actually grew from just studying for the taxi driver thing. So that's remarkable. And they did much better in neuropsychological uh, testing after the uh, study period than before. And that was just one event, one period of studying. Imagine if you're doing that throughout life or you're doing it for a protracted period of time. Um, <clears throat> occupational complexity is another thing. The most protective factor for brain health is occupational complexity. The more complex your job, the more protected you are. By far, more than any other variable for the brain is occupational complexity. Um, so we did, this is our study, um, we did a meta-analysis, and anybody who's done research, they know how, how painful meta-analyses are. First of all, they, they, uh, you have to collect everybody else who's done the research on the field, they have to respect you, you don't have to give you the data. A lot of times you have to beg, but you get it. And then you have to combine that statistics, the data together in a certain way and run the data. So we did this study on cognitive exercises and MCI, mild cognitive impairment patients. And what we found was the most important thing is complexity. And I'll tell you what complexity means to me. And work around your weakness. So as you're, if you're getting older and if you're having difficulty with memory, do memory games. There are three kinds of basic memory concepts, uh, verbal, visual, spatial, and procedural. Do the kind of activities that challenge that. If it's executive function, do things that where it makes you think, makes you solve problems, executive problems. And so complexity is the key. So out of that study, we came up with uh, <clears throat> three concepts at the core of building the brain. At the center of that, 
is where you're supposed to live, at that target. Complexity. What does complexity mean? Complexity means activities that activate multiple parts of your brain. And that's not Sudoku. For those Sudoku fans out there. No, continue with your Sudoku, that's fine. But I'm talking about much more complex behaviors. Learning a musical instrument. Or if you're already playing a musical, learning new songs. Learning to dance. Learning to manage a, 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 you know, a, a job. Volunteering. Learning different languages. Building things. That's complexity. You know, we had a patient, a VIA veteran, uh, who was having significant problem with his memory. He was 65. Tremendous. And he also had some depression. He also had some anxiety and, and was very... And when he was young, prior to going to the military, he, was, he loved fixing cars. Loved fixing cars. Then went to the military, and when he came out, he started working for a big company. I can't name it. And he, they made him do the same thing in the cars. So we thought, cars, right? That's good. But he was doing the same thing over and over again. Muffler, 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 muffler. And at 65, he was just besides himself. He came to me and said, I think it's time to retire. And we gave him some advice. He was gone for six months, came back. <clears throat> we did the testing, back to normal, cognitively, emotionally, in every sense. And his cognition was quite down, back to normal. So I said, what did you do? Did you change your diet? No, sorry, I didn't change my diet. Did you exercise? No. What did you do? You know, this guy who hated his job with the car dealership, right, with car fixing, right? Guess what he was doing? He went back to his home, started fixing cars in his garage. Why? He did it in his own terms. He did the way he wanted to do it. He loved every aspect of it. And that changed everything. So complex activities like that, that was more executive function. Playing a musical instrument. Aisha is an amazing singer along with my daughter. I'm the worst musician in the history of mankind. I played guitar for 30 years. I've, I think, gone one song, Stairway to Heaven, but I'm on, the th I'm on third stairway, staircase, not past that. It's terrible, but I love it because it's the, it's the act, uh, it's the rep repetition. Let's take music, playing a guitar. When you're playing your instrument, you're reading the notes. That's your left parietal, that's your language centers, your Wernickes and Brokaws being challenged. You're processing it, it's your frontal lobe. You're being creative, it's your right parietal lobe. You're visually processing it, it's your occipital lobe. You're emotionally processing it, it's our motor cortex, cerebellum with coordination, and emotionally processing it because you're emotionally involved. That's the entire brain. That's no Sudoku. That's a brain on fire. You can see how a complex behavior like that can build a brain. So you don't have to buy another gimmick. You don't have to follow a little dot on a screen because somebody said that you need to follow these dots. Get involved. Social activity. My mother's going to be very mad if she sees some of these. Uh, so my mother was all into this chess champion, this, this, that. All of a sudden, now she's 83. Every night there's a gathering in her home with her age-matched women. And they're playing cards for quarters. First of all, I told her that's illegal, but she didn't care. <clears throat> But look at that. So people playing cards, the act of learning how cards are played, processing that, the con conversations, sometimes cheating, that takes a lot of uh, you know, activity. That's mental activity, not Sudoku, not sitting in a corner. Social activity, volunteering, learning to dance, dance even adds the, the coordination component. You gotta see my dancing, that's even worse than my guitar. So, that's mental activity. This is not joke. This is not, I, if I had to do one thing at community levels, would be to involve communities into, other, into groups, get them involved in other activities with other people, give them a purpose beyond self and in the community. That's by far the most effective way that you can actually maintain the cognition. The earlier, the better, by the way. Challenge means if you're doing something complex but it's repetitive, it's not good for the brain because it's repetitive. So you only know where the next challenge is. If you've picked up the guitar and you know three chords, now it's time for the fourth chord. If you're, you're dancing and all you know is three moves, it's time for the third, fourth move. If you're learning languages like French, like I did in high school, and you, you only knew 20 words to go to a restaurant and for dating or whatever, it's time to go beyond that, you know, the, the, how to maneuver through Louvre instead of the cafes. Move the next 
challenge yourself. And only you know that. A computer is not going to tell you that. Only you know that. So do real life stuff. The third and the most important one comes to positive stress. <clears throat> purpose. If that activity does not serve some kind of purpose, it becomes stressful. And I don't mean purpose being something like saving the rainforest, although that would be good. But it would be simple things. My purpose is I want to learn to play a few songs on, on the guitar. That's a good purpose. My purpose is to help some people in my neighborhood. But that kind of a direction or vector is what will help us with, with mental activity. So complexity, challenge, and purpose are central. And, and we talked about all of those. And then habits. <clears throat> Very quickly about habits. We don't talk about just the science. If we just throw this at you, we've created failure, which is what doctors always do. Doctors are never taught two very important things. One is lifestyle, which is prevention, because it's disease model, it's not prevention model. It's not, it's sick care, it's not health care. The second, they're not second thing they're not taught about is behavior modification. Just do it. I did it. It's, it's incredible arrogance. Everybody's got their own journey, but this is what you do. Pick one specific behavior. This acronym is my favorite. It's very childish, very early in business. And all. Smart goals. How many people here know about smart goals? Yes. Specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. I'm going to be healthy this year. What does that mean? You're probably going to end up less healthy because of that kind of a goal. I'm going to lose weight. What does that mean? You're going to probably gain weight because of that the new, year, new Year resolution. I'm going to reduce sugar levels by 50% over the next six weeks. Is it specific? Sugar. Is it measurable? 50%. Is it attainable? I think I can reduce it by 50%. Is it relevant to the bigger goal of health? Yes, because that pulls you. That's the, that's the motivation. Is it time bound? Six weeks. Only do that. You didn't get to the health, unhealthy state overnight. Don't try to get out of it overnight. And when you do this, you actually rebuild habits. Now, let me tell you about habits. Our brain, the one percentile that we use, is all repetitive behavior habits. Even when you think you're thinking, you're actually using what they call habit loops. Why? Because that's a lower energy state. Thinking outside of the box is high energy state. So your brain wants to be in the lower energy state. So habits are critical. But guess when you developed all these habits? During your teenage life. Do you really want to live with your teenage habits? So it's time to reprogram them, but one habit at a time. And when you do so, you actually recreate pathways in your basal ganglia. And after you create, recreate several of them, that becomes a highway where habits become a norm, habit building. But take one habit at a time. Here's my least favorite word in English language. The second least favorite is uh, moderation, which is Basically, a doorway to failure. Anybody who wants to fail their diet, oh, I'm, I'm doing it in moderation. What does that mean? So forget about that. But my least favorite word is motivation. Anybody who says you just got to be motivated, they're saying that I'm motivated and you're a loser. It means nothing. So motivation is actually a physiological process that I've defined. I gave a talk on this in the Harvard Business School. When you have a smart goal in front of you, smart, specific, measurable, and you take... You only know what the steps should be. Steps that are achievable and successful. Your brain is a success-seeking machine. Then the next function of the brain is language. But it has two broad language terms. I like it, I don't like it. So as you make these successes, slowly after a while, not 21 days, I know everybody's doing a 21 day something, depends on the behavior. You know, you're not going to give up cocaine in 21 days. I'm not saying anybody here is doing that. but Or you're not going to give up sugar for 21, 21 days. And initially, in fact, you're going to feel worse. Everybody says, oh, this is terrible. It's failing me. Yeah, because you're having withdrawals. Sugar is addictive. But then after a couple of months, depending on the person and their proclivity, some of, some of us have more sugar addiction in the past. No, yeah. But it's going to take you longer. But that success, as you build that success, initially pain, but after a while, your brain comes up with this emotion. I like it. I like it. That has a vector. That has a direction. That's motivation. There is the, that's where behavior change can take place. Specific goals, successes, and then stick to one behavior, then add another behavior, and maybe next time it's cheese. 
find replacement cheese that have low fat, low cholesterol, and then maybe exercise. Start with five minutes of brisk walk, that's it. So that's critical that we, we start that way. Our work is in the community, we have a clinic, Alzheimer's Prevention Program. We also have the biggest research program in the country at the uh, beach cities, Manhattan Beach, Redondo Beach, Hermosa Beach, where the entire community is doing brain health initiative, and 1,700 people in this study. Um, and, uh, and all our profits from our books and other things go to our Healthy Minds Initiative to raise awareness about the power of the community to take care of itself. Um, and we have several other places that we're doing this. This is our book. And that's us. And uh, you can connect to us through social media. We'd be happy to connect with you through our website, teamsharesi.com. If you go to our website, we actually have a free brain health assessment test available where you can take a test finding out where you are in your journey towards better brain health. And you can fill out the questions to get information on nutrition, exercise, stress management, restorative sleep, and optimization. Thank you so much for your attention. We really appreciate being here.